Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show here with newly married Ben Avery. You finally did it. You made it legal with the old battle axe and now a long, happy life together. Uh, recap of the wedding, which was lovely, is on uh, Patreon. And um, I had a great time. I enjoyed it. I really did. Truly. Everyone loved it. I liked it. Um, and and even the parts of it I didn't know that I would think I would enjoy, um, like the exorcism, for example. They did an exorcism where they brought a child out in a tub and <laughs> they kept putting it in the water. And then there was a lot of screaming, but then your mother said, that's how it, you know it's working. Mm -hmm. It's the demon leaving. Well, I didn't know that. And it was lovely. And then we had we did the cake. Um, I want to start off today by by saying that we we criticize um these Batman villain uh, billionaires that seem to be running around our planet. Being a billionaire now just seems to be you get to do what you think is cool. Like when you're worth a billion dollars, it's basically just uh, teenage fantasies uh, that you get to act out. But I will say something. Let Hey, Let's give credit where credit is due. I will admit when I'm wrong about somebody. Truly. I've said negative things about Jeff Bezos before on the show. We all know what's happening with COVID in India. Jeff Bezos has decided to step in and help. And this is, this is amazing to watch. Let's play the video. This is Jeff Bezos is getting involved to help the people of India right now. And it's heartwarming. All right, here we go. Guys, how exciting is this? Come on. I'm a, I'm a bit confused, but... Those hats are very important for the sun. It's good in there. So he's what he's doing to help with the COVID in India is he's uh, uh, letting people know that you can be one of the very first to buy the first seat on the new Shepherd, which is uh, his spaceship. Hey, man, that's not nothing. That is not nothing. And I think that it's high time we give him his due because it would be easy to just step back and do nothing when people are suffering in India, that somebody's dying. Like, I don't even know the statistic. It's like every two seconds or something crazy. And they're burning bodies in the street, and it is an absolute humanitarian crisis. But to be honest... Jeff Bezos uh, saying that you can buy a ticket to a rocket which will take you on a tour through space, I do believe is a good use of, I think it's good. I think it's a good use of resources. I do. And anyone that disagrees with me is wrong. I'm a little sick of people not appreciating this man's contribution. He's in a, well, what is one of these cars he's in? The New Shepard. No, the car. Oh, the Rivian, the RT1. And they they don't make a lot of these. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And he's in there with a hat, and he's showing people that very sh soon you could get on the new Shepard. Mm -hmm. Who's in that car with him, by the way? I guess his new girlfriend, maybe. Oh, look at Jeff. He's got people in the back with masks on. What's that about? What are you doing with a mask on in the back of the Rivian with Jeff Bezos? What virtue? Can you imagine that level of virtue signaling? You're on the way to a rocket launch with Jeff Bezos in the back of his Rivian car, and you've got a mask on to prove what exactly? Is that person scared of getting COVID? Are they scared of getting COVID from Jeff Bezos? On the way to a rocket lot. Can you imagine explaining that to the people at the urgent care? Because I'm sure that's where they go. You know, the urgent care. They go, how'd you get this? Well, I was in Jeff Bezos' Rivian. His what? 
It's a car. They make very few of them. And we're on the way to see the new Shepard. The who? It's the, uh, the new Shepard. It's the new space tourism rocket that Bezos, my boss, Jeff. And uh, I got COVID. I was in the car and I got COVID. So it's smart that they have the mask on because it is a high-risk situation. It's a high-risk situation to be uh, in a car with a billionaire on the way to uh, rocket launch. It's a real hotbed of coronavirus in there. Jeff Bezos' space venture, Blue Origin, said in a video released Thursday, it will soon begin selling tickets for rides on its space tourism rocket called the New Shepard. Guys, how exciting is this? Come on, Bezos said. <laughs> because people are getting bored with it, you know? And I'm not one of these people who's always like, we should not explore space. I get it. It's just funny. Sign up to learn how you can buy the very first seat on New Shepard. Now, do you think, do you think, because obviously it's going to be for rich people, mm. but you know everyone's going woke now. Mm. So do you think that they have to just, for the, for, to save face, send up like a, a Spanish lady who works in a laundromat and blast her in his space <laughs> with the other space freak multimillionaires? Like, do they just take, like, a black bus driver and say, you've won, and she goes, what have I won? And you go, you're going to space. And she's going to be like, what? <laughs> you go, listen, Jeff Bezos is uh, <laughs> trying out his new uh, tourism rocket, the New Shepard. Yeah, the problem is a lot of people bought tickets, and they're all pretty damn white. <laughs> Because white people are sick of this planet. They've ravaged it. They've destroyed most of it. They're sick of it. They want to go somewhere else. Point being, we need it to look more representative of America. So you have won. It's like that thing. You've been selected when you get those phone calls. So they're just, they're, I, w I want them to go into the hood and get like a thug bitch and throw her in the new <laughs> shepherd sitting next to whoever the hell is spending money to go to space. It shows him driving across the Texas desert, the remote location of the New Shepard launch facility, notably at the wheel of a Rivian R1T electric truck, which is emblazoned with Blue Origin signature feather. New Shepard is designed to carry as many as six people at a time on a ride past the edge of space. With the capsules on previous test flights reaching an altitude of more than 340,000 feet, 100 kilometers. The capsule, which has massive windows to give passengers a view, spends as much as 10 minutes in zero gravity before returning to Earth. The rocket launches vertically with the booster. Now, I don't want anyone to get hurt, and we know that. Mm -hmm. But would there be something wrong with a Challenger-like explosion killing all of the people except the... Black bus driver and that was sad about that. But like, if if it was just the usual suspects, sure. people that have too much money and go, let's go to space. Would there be anything wrong with watching this thing incinerate? I don't think so. The rocket launches vertically with the booster detaching and returning to land at a concrete pad nearby. The capsule's return is slowed down by a set of parachutes before softly landing in the desert. Shares of Virgin Galactic fell more than 3% after Blue Origin posted its video as Bezos' company will compete with Richard Branson in the niche space sector of suborbital tourism. My favorite word now, <laughs> suborbital tourism. Don't you want to see space? Virgin Galactic has sold tickets to 600 passengers at a price between $200,000 and $250,000 each. Although the company expects it could increase its prices substantially for the first commercial flights. They will be, and then uh, Bezos said we're going to price them uh, competitively uh, with uh, where uh, Branson is at. So between $200,000 and a quarter million around that area. Mm -hmm is what it will cost to uh, engage in suborbital tourism while the world literally burns beneath you. That's what being a billionaire is now. I mean, and we should be exploring space, but I think it's funny that immediately we're thinking about uh, ways to open Marriott's up there and get people up there uh, uh, in uh, 
a completely non-educational capacity, by the way. Let's take a space cruise. It's about that time. Everyone is also being mean right now to Bill Gates, who's one of our good friends. They're being mean to him because he doesn't want to share his vaccine patent with the developing world. Well, I mean, have you ever been to a restaurant and you're eating the chicken wings and you go, what is in this sauce? I've done this. And the waiter looks at you and goes, we could tell you. What's the funny joke? Do you know it? You don't know it. Oh, if we told you, we'd have to kill you? If we tell you, we'd have to kill you. <laughs> this is this guy's hot wing sauce. This is his secret sauce. This is his flavor of the month. Mango habanero glaze. <laughs> Sauce. And no, it doesn't get bottled up without his say-so. He could tell you, but he'd have to kill you. You think Bill Gates was sitting around cooking up this batch so that people out there could just take it and open up their own wing stands? We think not. And, and I understand that because you imagine a hot wing sauce, imagine if it was a vaccine that could potentially save the lives of, of millions of people that are literally burning their bodies in the street right now. You would still say, hey, that's my mother's recipe. <laughs> you can't take it. <laughs> Let's read a little bit of this. Bill Gates under fire for saying vaccine formula shouldn't be shared with developing world. Do you want to hear him defend himself here? We have let's, a little clip of him. Let's hear him defend himself because we are too critical of him. I have always believed this guy had no intentions except the best intentions for humanity. That's why he wanted to shoot a missile of uh, dust at the sun and uh, why he, uh, you know, he went uh, you know, white water rafting with uh, Epstein. But he is just about saving lives. There's been some speculation that the changing intellectual property rules um, and, and allowing these vaccines, as you say, the, the, the recipe for these vaccines to be shared would be helpful. And do you think that would be helpful? No. Why not? Well, there's only so many vaccine factories in the world and people are very serious about the safety of vaccines. And so moving something that had never been done, moving a vaccine from, say, a... a J&J &J factory into a factory in India, that it's novel. It's only because of our grants and our expertise that can happen at all. The, the thing that's holding things back in this case is not intellectual property. There's not like some idle vaccine factory with regulatory right. approval that yeah. makes magically <laughs> safe vaccines. Right. Uh, no, no, you know, no. you've got to do the trials on these things and yeah. every manufacturing process yeah. has to be looked at in a, right. in a very... Uh, careful uh, way. Uh, I'll answer the real answer. Play her question again, and I'm going to answer his answer. Okay, okay. There's been some speculation that the changing intellectual property rules um, and, and allowing these vaccines, as you say, the, the, the recipe for these vaccines to be shared would be helpful. And do you think that would be helpful? Listen. 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 <laughs> I don't even know what you think you're asking me right now. Okay? Here's a reality. There are these things called vaccines. They're tough to make. They're not made in a magical factory in the sky. Okay? They're made for profit in a factory where I walk around with a hard hat <laughs> and I goose... People, gender unimportant, I just goose them. That's where they're going to be made. And if you want one, you can spend a little coin, okay? But other than that, we're not going to be letting you run around with our product all over the developing world. We do that. 
If somebody's pricking you in sub-Saharan Africa, that is us. Okay? So let's be real clear about why I'm in this business. It's to make a couple of bucks. You think tech is good money? You think finance is good money? You know what's good money? The essence of all life. That's what I've decided. I got a little bored. I got a little bored at Microsoft. Where do you work? Microsoft, right? right. Yeah, I got a little bored there. Okay. So I decided my next business venture would be trying to control the essence of all life on this planet, deciding how much of it there is and where it should happen. Okay. So I'm not interested in like, you know, this isn't a potluck dinner where everybody brings a vaccine. This isn't a firehouse where somebody brings macaroni salad and somebody else, you know, brings a fucking lasagna. This is a vaccine party and it's at my house. Okay, bitch. He seemed a little flustered kind of giving that answer. He didn't look as comfortable as he usually does no, giving that didn't. answer. Why doesn't he host SNL? What's with Elon Musk all the time? Get Gates uh, to host SNL. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk clearly wants the spotlight. Uh, let's not give it to him. Let's get Bill Gates to host SNL, and they could do a fun sketch about Bill Gates explaining uh, to an Indian peasant whose entire family of 72 people has just been burned alive in the street why he can't share the vaccine patent. It'll be a laugh riot. I think so. Can't you see that sketch? Mm -hmm. 80 Bryant and Bowen and Yang dressed as Indian peasants crawling across the floor. <laughs> okay. Talking to Bill Gates about the vaccine patent. I can. And why not? People are up in arms uh, about this. Bernie Sanders. What did Sanders say? Sanders was like, hey. Uh, Sanders Sanders was uh, star staunchly against this. Yeah, he wa he wants to share the patents. Mm -hmm. Sanders is like a good moral man. He is. The huge concentration held by... Okay, last weekend, Senator Bernie Sanders called on President Biden to support international efforts to suspend patent protections for COVID-19 vaccines, arguing that they're artificially restricting the world supply of vaccines and preventing citizens of poor countries from gaining access to a life-saving product. There's growing public support in America for Sanders' position. A petition signed by 2 million people was sent to Biden, urging him to back a temporary patent waiver for the vaccines. 60%. On the other side of the fence is Billy Gates, Billy Boy Gates, <laughs> who supports increasing poor countries' accessi uh, accessibility to the vaccines. However, <laughs> you love that sentence? Yeah. On the other side is Bill Gates, who supports increasing poor countries' accessibility to the vaccines. However, Gates, the great global philanthropist. I mean, do they write, did Bill and Melinda write these articles and send them to the paper? Gates, the great global philanthropist whose businesses are based on intellectual property laws, argues that it's a bad idea to wait. This is the guy that they had to break up Microsoft. Because he wanted a monopoly. He had a monopoly. He wants a monopoly on your health. And when people like me said things like that, I was called names. Argues it's a bad idea to waive patent protections for COVID vaccines and share their formulas with the world for the sake of achieving a dramatic rise in their production and distribution. He said it's a technical matter. There's a limited number of manufacturing plants and the safety of the manufacturing process is of the utmost importance. Hey, there's a limited number of places to do this and we should keep it that way. How about, how about trying to increase the safety standards at the... Fa Shut up! Uh, sir, may I ask, could it be possible to increase the safety standards. Hey, fuck you! I, my question is just that I know you're concerned that there's not too many manufacturing plants. Could we build those plants, perhaps, and increase the safety standards? Get out of my face! 
we hope every, we 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 uh, we hope that the patents are uh, available. But and this I truly believe. This is what I believe. If you are in India and you are 21 and you are healthy, I don't believe you should get vaccinated. Even if everyone you know has died, if you are in India and you are healthy and you take the right supplements and you work out and you eat a high protein diet, perhaps carnivore, uh, if you eat only meat in India, which you can't, you're not even allowed to, right? Right. So if you're breaking the rules and somehow surviving off a carnivore diet and you are healthy and you are 21 and everyone you know is dead, still, still. And if your 21-year-old friend who is also healthy died, I would I I don't think you need to get it. And I hope that's not a firestorm. <laughs> I hope that's not national news. <laughs> and I hope that Dr. Anthony Fauci doesn't respond to me at Tim J. Dillon on Twitter. But if he did, that would be fine too. Mm-hmm. I'm not just trying to get attention here. I'm not trying to get attention. A lot of people accuse me all the time, like, oh, you're trying to get attention. I'm not trying to get attention. I'm just saying that the podcasting world has made some news in the last week. I don't think anyone should get the vaccine, even if you're old and immunocompromised and and you've had COVID and it almost killed you once. I don't think you should get the vaccine. I don't think anyone should get any vaccine ever. And if, if that's a national news story and my name trends on every social media site that's ever existed, then so be it. Because that's what I feel. Do you understand? So I'm saying that no one should ever get a vaccine. Okay? Ever for any reason. (laughs) Even if you are sick and you have asthma and you are 700 pounds and it's being offered to you for free. Don't get it. At Tim J. Dillon. Instagram. Twitter, timdillancomedy.com. Live dates are on the on the tour page. Merch is on the merch page. Okay? I'm not, I don't want this. I don't want this controversy. Do you understand? I'm just saying I don't believe what's happening in India is actually happening. I believe it's fake. I believe they are faking this. Have you seen any actual body? I think they're just burning wood in India to get attention. I'm not trying to be controversial and increase my audience like that. What I'm trying to do is just converse. So what is happening in India isn't real and you should not get the vaccine. Okay? Other things I've noticed. Trans child athlete. I'm kidding. That see, I won't even even for the joke. Even for the bit. Even for the bit, we won't. Even though it's clearly an ironic bit, and many of my smarter listeners realize that and, and viewers, we can't even, you know? We can't even go because you know what'll happen. But Rogan is, uh, he doesn't mean don't get the vaccine. What do you think he means? Uh, I, I I think he means that if the- Don't va- be nervous. You're such a cuck. <laughs> he, he, he means if, if you're a healthy person who's not around other, like other people should be, like F- Fauci kind of agreed with him, right? With Fauci's comment in regards to Rogan. We said if you're in a vacuum, then that's okay. Then you shouldn't get vaccinated. Like Fauci did indirectly kind of agree with R- Rogan, right? With his statement. I'll pull it up. I'm not trying to do a non-answer here, but. I think Fauci was saying mm-hmm. that he was disappointed uh, that India would go to such great lengths 
to just try to get cheap vaccine from Billy Gates, an icon and a great man. What if this happened? Okay. What if Fauci showed up at Rogan's studio and smacked the shit out of him on air? <laughs> like just beat the shit out of Rogan on air. We would all listen to Fauci. Fauci should fight Rogan yeah. in, a, in a Jake Paul style mm -hmm. public spectacle. That's, that's how to settle it. Fauci versus Rogan. Mm -hmm. Similar height, but different skill sets. And let's see what happens. The reason why, this is Fauci's quote, he said, is you're talking about yourself in a vacuum. You're worried about yourself getting infected and likely that you're not going to get any symptoms, but you can get infected and will get infected if you put yourself at risk. Well, we support everyone, and that's the most important thing. If we support all of the people out there that are doing all of the things at every minute, however you feel, whether you're a cop or you're a fat girl with a knife, whether you are Joe Rogan or Anthony Fauci, <laughs> whether you are uh, vaccinated or anti-vax, whether you are Bill Gates or uh, an Indian peasant who desperately needs you to uh, remove the vaccine patent, we support everyone. We support everyone in all of the things that they do at all the times they do them. How often do you get the chance to buy underwear from a man who is dishonorably discharged from the military for murdering a child? unprovoked. Well, today I'm going to give that to you. Sheathunderwear.com. Sheath, it's great as underwear, as a bathing suit. It's a little pouch that you can put, not little, but it's a pouch to put your cock and balls in. It helps you that you don't sweat and chafe. It is great. It has that moisture wicking stuff, but it, you don't get a rash. It is great. Sheathunderwear.com. I'm telling you, the inventor, Robert Patron, check out the story. It's interesting. It's somewhat inspiring that a man would come back from murdering civilians and start a company where he sells underwear to other men because he's a tough man that didn't have any gay experiences in the military at all. <laughs> he's a man that is tough, that thinks about sweaty balls and shafts, but he loves pussy, and there was absolutely no strange Brokeback Mountain-style experience in the tents over there in Fallujah, do not think about it at all. He's, he's focused mainly on the sweat of men's balls. Sheathunderwear.com. Sheathunderwear.com. Don't ask, don't tell. They have, there's a flexible pillowcase for your junk. It's literally all I wear now. They're the best if you have to try it yourself. Give them a Google, sheathunderwear.com. Do some research. Sheath, the inventor, Robert Patron. Oh, we just read this. Whatever. He's great. He's a gay murderer who killed babies in the military. And if that's not something you can't, can get behind, then you're not an American. He, he loved going to Iraq and sucking cock and shooting people in the face. And then he came back to make an underwear that keeps your balls from sweating so that when someone is sucking them after they've murdered a family trying to get information... Uh, which is what he used to do. They're all good. They love comedy, Sheath Underwear. You know, one of these, they're just going to go enough. Maybe the gay thing? One of them. <laughs> I keep trying to find an angle where they drop us. I literally keep trying to do it. I, it can't happen. Mm. I keep trying to find an angle. So I'm, I'm going to call this guy gay now <laughs> for a few weeks to see if that'll do it. And then if that doesn't do it, we'll move on to something else. But this is a gay man who started an underwear company <laughs> because he likes cock. And he doesn't like when it gets too sweaty. He likes a nice, uh, dry cock. He wants to make it wet while he's blowing another soldier in the desert. It's a love story. It's good underwear. It legit is. Mm -hmm. Sheathunderwear.com. It really is good underwear. Yeah, we wear it. And the guy who started it really is a gay murderer. <laughs> You know, all things can be true. Both things can be true. Sheathunderwear.com. You use code Tim to save 20%. Sheath, S-H-E-A-T-H, underwear.com. Uh, use the code T-I-M. Thank you. 
If you're a fellow whose resting body temperature rivals that of Las Vegas pavement in mid-July, standard antiperspirants don't give you much relief. This is really the best deodorant on the market. Duke Cannon Dry Ice Cooling Antiperspirant is made for guys who run uncomfortably hot. It's perfect for you if you work outdoors or indoors or you're working during the summer, you're an athlete, it's moisture and friction activated. Cooling system is formulated with menthol to give you an all-day sensation of standing under an air conditioner cranked to high, not a heat lamp stuck on broil. Available in refreshing menthol and eucalyptus this peppermint and musk sounds. What's good about this deodorant is that it's not only you are dry, but you feel dry. You feel cool. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Um, with the highest level of odor and wetness protection allowable, you'll last longer in the heat, and your T-shirts will too. Okay, they've got all kinds of products. Dry ice cooling, antiperspirant, um, and you're going to love it, okay? Really, all you guys have to do is uh, go to DukeCannon.com, D-U-K-E-C-A-N-N-O-N.com, DukeCannon.com, and use promo code Dylan. You get 10% off your next order. Perfect if you're a lady and you want to get something nice for your man, or if you're a dude and your woman is a hulking beast. Use promo code Dylan for 10% off your next order. You get free shipping with orders over $20. A curated collection of Duke Cannon products are also available at select Target stores. But I'm telling you right now, what's great about this is it's got menthol to deliver instant cooling. It's enriched with activated charcoal to remove toxins while deodorizing. Moisture and friction activated cooling system that keeps you cool. Highest allowable sweat protection. Crisp peppermint and musk scent. You're going to love it. It's the highest allowable sweat protection. Go to DukeCannon.com and use promo code Dylan, D-I-L-L-O-N, for 10% off your next order. Um, let, me, let me just quickly with the Makia Bryant tweet. My point about that tweet, which got everyone nuts, was that fat children, fat teenagers, are looked at as threats, as adults. It may not be right. I wasn't saying she deserved to die because she was fat. I said the cop made a split-second decision because he saw the girl with a knife uh, uh, charging another girl, uh, you know, or about to thrust a knife into another girl, which is a potentially fatal injury. I did not say she deserved to die because she was fat. The fat activist movement came for me again. I don't remember the last time they came for me. But the fat activist movement... Uh, has come for me. And this is why I'm actually trying to get in better shape because uh, fat people at, w at one time were a jolly, sad, but jolly people. Meaning fat people were sad when they were by themselves, but when they were with others, they had to convince you that they weren't sad and they were like, it's fun, we're having fun, I'm fun. You know, now fat people are like, they're like rude and they're, it's true. I don't want to be a part of this community anymore because they've become, they've become like moralists and they're, they're, they're saying that fat is uh, like a mark of achievement or a mark of virtue that you should love your body no matter what. Well, maybe I'm not telling anyone not to love themselves, but I'm saying you should love yourself uh, within reason. Do you see what I mean? You shouldn't just love yourself no matter what. There's got to be a point where you stop loving yourself. There's got to be a line. Like body positivity. Is there ever a line where you're not allowed to be positive about your body? There was a guy when I grew up, he was 1,100 pounds. He had, when he died, he they had to cut part of his house out and take him out. <laughs> they, had to, they had to do a construction project. on His name was Walter. He's from Long Island. Some fucking person will find it. They had to cut out part of his house to get him out of the house. Did he really need to hear... <laughs> that he was beautiful the way he was. I'm not saying it's necessarily always a negative message, but I'm saying between hating yourself because you're a little, you got some pudge and needing to be cut out of a wall, is there a happy medium where we can, we can tone it down with the love of the bodies? Can we tone it down with the love of the bodies? Here's the other thing about fat people. Fat people are now pretending they don't know they're fat. And they don't, like, fat people are now acting like fat 
has no negative health uh, implications and that it's just not harder to do things. They're like, oh, it's a social construct. Not always. Walk upstairs. That's not a social construct. It just sucks. Walking upstairs is hard. When I do it with him, when I get to the third or the fourth flight, I have to stop and pretend I'm saying something profound <laughs> or, or pretend to notice something. This I'll be like, oh, you know what I just thought of? To just catch my breath because I don't want to keep going. You know you're fat. You know you're unhealthy. If you're a fat person, you know you're unhealthy. Can you play Lizzo's thing where she's talking about the body positive movement being co-opted by thin people? And I'm not saying if you're fat, you should hate yourself or you should be unhappy with yourself or you should be, uh, you know, made fun of or shamed or no, we don't want any of that. But people and not everyone has to be uh, rail thin, but we need to calm down with the love of the bodies that are like being broken. Lizzo said that the body positive movement was being used by people who, who like really like their bodies, genuinely, like thin people, are getting involved and saying, hey, I love my body. And Lizzo's like, yes, we get it. Everyone should love their body. But this movement is for fat people and fat women of color specifically. It's on Lizzo's TikTok. Yes. Here we are. The, the, and the thing with the McKee Bryan thing, it's a tragedy that she died. It sucks. I'm very upset about it. Um, that anyone is that dies, that anybody is killed by the police, that anybody's in that situation. Um, it, 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 it's a tragic situation. But I was not fat. I was not saying she deserved to die because she was fat. This is, this is, uh, this is insane. Um, what I was saying is that a fat person wielding a knife. I was 16. I was chubby. Not that chubby. I, I got chubbier later. But like a fat person wielding a knife, it's, it, most people look at it and they're, they're afraid you don't register as a child. You don't register as a child when you're a fat person wielding, unless, unless you're a chef. If you're fat and you have a knife, you have to be a chef and you have to be preparing a meal. But in any other situation, a fat person with a knife is very scary. It's true. I, I, don't, I don't mean to disrupt anyone's sense of reality, but it, it's not nice what happened, and I don't like it. But I also don't deserve uh, to be called out by the fat activists. Here we are. Would you wake up and trade places with somebody who was on the heavier side? I'm glad she asked because this is giving me very much when that sociologist, Dr. Jane, asks that room full of white people, raise your hand if you want to be treated like how black people are treated in this country. Or raise your hand if you would wake up and be black tomorrow. And nobody raised their hand. And that's because they know that there's some systemic bullshit that happens to black people that does not happen to them and will never happen to white people. That's correct. So, yes, if I asked you right now, have you been shamed? Yes, you've been through a lot. Yes, it sucks being a person in this society because we have to go through so much to love ourselves but would you switch places with a fat person's body tomorrow you would not because you know that there's a whole system that oppresses fat people that you do not well, experience now and we that have you to will stop never it. experience wait a minute hold on the system that oppresses fat people i don't know i look at the restaurants and the portions and the servings and the drive throughs and i think fat people are pretty well cared for in this country. They're pretty well taken care of. I don't see the oppression of fat people when there are fast food restaurants and all you can eat buffets and there's Postmates and Grubhub and DoorDash and people will literally show up to your house and put a sandwich in your mouth for you. I don't see fat people being, uh, I mean, literally, there are shows about food. On there is a network dedicated to food. There are countless Instagram. I on my Instagram, it shows me like hot dudes and and uh, nice houses, and then just those exploding desserts. You know those desserts that explode? It's very sexual. It's like it's a dome that's over it, and they they pour something on it, and then it just explodes. All I see on Instagram is those desserts. So it's weird to me that she says there's a system 
that's against fat people, but literally everything from what you put in your mouth to even what you look at every day is to entice and excite fat people. Am, am I wrong about that? Yeah. I know that people go through things for being fat. I hooked up with a guy once who did nothing but grab my fat and scream at the top of his lungs. It was very disturbing. He was grabbing, my, and this is a fetish that I found out people have, and it has to do with something in childhood, I don't know. But he would just grab my fat and mash it together, and he'd go, ah! <laughs> And it was off-putting at the time. I was trying to enjoy it. He was having fun with it. But I understand that that's what happens to people, truly, literally. He was sucking my dick, but then he just decided to start mashing my fat together, and he went, ah! Ah! I did that for several minutes. But then I read about that, and that's something that's more normal than not normal. So what I'm saying is that I understand what she's saying, but I also have issues with it. C continue this. Okay. So let's remember body positivity. Yes, we want to end harassment and shame, but we also are working to dismantle a system that oppresses fat people. What is that system that Would oppresses fat people, though? This is what I'm curious about. And I genuinely want to be educated. I understand that fat people have it tougher and some people have medical issues and some people, you know, are not. It's not their fault that they're as fat as they are. Um my mother used to complain because my mother had a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. My mother did. She had a, a slow thyroid. And she would tell us that all the time at Outback. She would say, I have a thyroid condition. She would tell us about it at the Outback. And I know that that happens. I'm not blind to that. I get it. It's not all nurture. Some of it is nature. My mother would explain that to me. But uh, continue. I want to see the rest of this. Oh, that was all of it. That was all of it? Yeah, just one TikTok, 60 seconds. Well, that's okay. I saw something else. But it's, it's uh, we get it. We we know where, where we're going here with that. And I'm just saying that I have a lot of love and respect for the body. But can we put on one of the really big people that talks about fat phobia and fat acceptance? Mm -hmm. Let's put on... Because I'm trying to understand the system that oppresses fat people. Okay. So an F-bodied person? F -body. What the fuck is F-bodied? It's, it's what they identify as now. F Jesus fucking Christ. Fat-bodied. Um, now see. we're talking, you got trans ams up there. <laughs> and I mean cars, not YouTube relax. F-bodied activist, maybe. Just put fat activist in, Ben. Don't start getting fucking fancy with your Reddit terms. Let's get a fat activist here to tell us what the deal is. Mm -hmm. Tess Holiday, but it's an hour. I can't. It's too long. Okay. This is the difference between body positivity and fat activism from Nylon. Go to this. I'm interested. I want to learn because this is another community. I have the gays have left me out. Now these people have left me out. Should I do this? I'll do this. What do I have to say? Everybody should be a bowling ball. <laughs> Hi, my name is Virgie Tovar and I'm the author of You Have the Right. I don't have to fuck fat, fat people, right? Because that's my only problem. But I'll get on the board with everything else. Because I think people should have to fuck me. Keep going. Okay. Is this what it is? If fat activism is just forcing skinny people to fuck us, I'm into that. If, that's, if this is a clever workaround saying that you have to fuck me or I'll kill you because you're... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's fine. If that's what fat active, because I genuinely don't know what it is. So if it's just shaming thin people into having sex with fat people, I am for that. Keep going. I talk about the differences between body positivity and fat activism or fat liberation. What I've found since body positivity has eclipsed fat activism is that positivity seems to be the biggest I guess, demand of the movement. The right. thing is that positivity isn't exactly a political resource. So it's important as we're thinking about moving forward as a political movement, what do we really want? Yes. And in fat activism, the demands are pretty clear. Okay. Body positivity doesn't have that same Well, let's go with the focus. activists. 
if they're going to be a part of a political movement, you need to know what the purpose, Tell what the how. vision, and what the plan of that yes, movement is. Yes, what is the plan? An issue I have with body positivity is that the face of it becomes increasingly whiter, straighter, and thinner the more that the movement gains traction. Right. People of all sizes, all shapes, all ages, all abilities, all genders experience body shaming. However, right, like when we're consistently focusing on the people who have the least experience with structural discrimination, we you end up doing those ourselves a disservice politically. We have to really focus on who is the person who is most affected by this issue? We all benefit when we think about the person who is having the greatest impact. Third, as body positivity eclipsed fat activism, the question of the movement kind of went from how do we create more rights and a life free from discrimination for people of all sizes to how do I love my body? Both questions are very important, but in okay. isolation, okay. right? I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I need to know what fat activism is because they're fat activists. Sometimes if you lose weight, they, they get mad because mm. you've betrayed, you've made them feel worse by losing weight. Mm. I am so confused as to what this is. Cause I went on a rabbit hole about this after I was accused of being fat phobic. Imagine. And I'm trying to find out what fat activism is because I may be for it. Do you understand? I could be a very powerful resource. There are a lot of, there are a lot of listeners out there and viewers, and I am for fat activism as long as I don't have to touch another fat person. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is. I don't want to touch a fat person, but tell me what fat activism is because I may join it. So we, we may find out at the, at the end of this video, you think? Let's see. Question of how do I love my body is not complete. How can we think about this not just as an individual experience, right. but as kind of a collective one? Indeed. And the way that we do that is we sort of start to think about, you know, again, who are the people who are experiencing the greatest impact of discrimination based on body? And when we kind of think about that, we expand our frame of reference and our political power and our political might beyond just one person to something that can have this extraordinary ripple effect on a cultural level. And and finally, body positivity, she goes, body and justice. Finally, queso. <laughs> How great would that be? If she goes, and finally, queso. Okay, let's let's finish this. But I, I'm still, you haven't done what I've asked. I want to find out what, what fat activism is. And this is not telling me what it is. Yeah, is it's not, telling it's me it's vague. differentiating body positivity from fat activism. But I need to know what fat activism is. I believe it is that we cannot, here's what I think it is. I think it's that fat people get to go around <laughs> killing thin people, which I'm not against per se. My only problem with overweight people, and I don't have any because I am an overweight person, mm. but my only problem with fat people is that I don't want to, I don't want to have sex with them because I feel like it's Monique had that joke. Two fat people, she had a great joke. I'm trying to find your shit. You're trying to find my shit. Let's just go to, uh, uh, let's get a fish sandwich or something. It was yeah. very funny. And, and I'm just, uh, but I want to be involved in the fat activist movement while mainly spending my time with, with twinks who are kept on a treadmill and, and stuffed with Adderall. But only because it's, I feel like that someone needs to show them respect too. But we're not, we've, we've, we've not been able to find what, a, what fat activism is. It says we, the plane seats need to be bigger and right. And that fat yeah. people have to be celebrated mm. and, and which is great. And they have to be on the cover of magazines mm. And things like that. Even but though. see, you're with fat acceptance. But go to fat activism is what we want. Mm. It's also known as right here. Oh, okay. And th there's third wave fat activism. You can't find one thing on YouTube about this. Uh, it's mostly like Dr. Rhonda Patrick clips, Rogan Who's clips. Who's not a doctor. Can we move on, please? <laughs> She's never seen a patient. I mean, enough with her, please. 
What if I told you that Bitcoin is the future of money? Now, what if I told you there's just going to be an actual in-person, in-the-flesh event this year, fo focused exclusively on Bitcoin, and that it will be the biggest event in Bitcoin history? Now, what if I continued to tell you that the event was going to happen in Miami, Florida, on June 4th and 5th, and that I, Tim Dillon, was going to be there too? Would you believe me? It's true. Tell them what they've won. The Bitcoin 2021 conference is happening, folks. It'll be in sunny, hot Miami, Florida, June 4th. 4th and 5th of this year. Headlining the conference will be Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter. Chamath Plablaulibla. Tony Hawk. Yep, he's a big corner. Michael Saylor, the dude who takes billion-dollar loans against his company to buy Bitcoin. And Nick Sabo. Tim Dillon will be also considered a headliner if he does a good job with this ad read. I bet I won't be. But there will also be a whale day ahead of the conference. If you're a rich whale, you can go. A whale pass will be there on June 3rd. There'll be Bitcoin-powered arcade games, a massive art gallery with all the most famous Bitcoin artists, Tony Hawk skating in a half pipe, and much more. An after party. It's fun for the entire family. Bring the kids. Get them involved in cryptocurrency. Liquidate their college funds and buy the coin. The hell with your sick mother. Take her out of the nursing home. Get her cash and buy the coin. Go to b.tc slash conference to check out the event. Purchase your ticket and be sure to use my promo code Tim Dillon, T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. There is nothing in the world more important than buying Bitcoin. Not your kids, not their schooling, not your sick fucking relatives, not your stupid wife with that fucking titty cancer. What you need is more Bitcoin. Who cares that some of the people in your family can't eat? They'll eat soon and they'll eat the coin. Bitcoin is the most important thing in the world. It'll never drop and even when it does it just means it'll go higher it's going to a million that's what the Winklevoss has said listen to the Winklevi if your wife starts in you grab her don't hit her but grab her forcefully and let her know that you're a man and say I put our money in Bitcoin because of the Winklevi Come learn about Bitcoin and celebrate life and freedom of the Bitcoin 2021 <laughs> conference. Bring the kids. Bring the family if you can afford to. If not, leave them somewhere. Leave them at a rest stop and come and learn about the future of money. It's b.tc forward slash conference and use the code Tim Dillon for 10% off your purchase price. Magic Spoon is a keto cereal. We all had it yesterday. Everybody loves it. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, soy-free, uh, low-carb, GMO-free. Exciting news. Magic Spoon has released a super delicious new flavor, birthday cake. Open your own box. Build your own box. Flavors. Customize them. Fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cinnamon. It's like the sugar cereals you ate as a kid with no sugar. Go to magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon to grab the new limited edition birthday cake or a custom bundle of cereal. Try it today. Be sure to use the promo code Tim Dillon at checkout to save $5 off your order. Magic Spoon is great. They use high quality sweeteners. It is so much better than sugar. They use what? That fruit extract mm -hmm. that they always use. Yeah, yeah. You know what it's called? What is it? It's a fruit. It should be in the ad read here. Monk fruit. Monk fruit, yes. Monk fruit is what they're using. Not sugar. That's why it's a little pricey, but it's good. If you were trying to get rid of sugar, and everybody is, that's the move. Go to magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. It's so tasty. You feel like a kid. And now Magic Spoon ships to Canada. Oh, wow. Canada. Canada. So if you're in Canada and you like staying healthy or like feeding your children healthy cereal, this is really great for the kids. Don't get them addicted to sugar young. Get them on the spoon. So important. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. Gluten-free, soy-free, keto-friendly, 140 calories a serving, shut your mouth. Zero grams of sugar, 13, 14 grams of protein, four net grams of carbs. I'm telling you, folks, it's changed the life of everyone I know. If you want to be an Olympian, this is a cereal you need to eat. Don't you want to be in the Olympics? What event would you do? Golf. You'd do nothing. But I'd do anything I wanted to. Magicspoon.com slash Tim Dillon. T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. Okay, so we, we, we finally have a, a, an answer for what is fat activism. Mm -hmm. 
And this answer I like very much. We're going to share it uh, with the audience. Anyway, so what fat activism is for me, um, I've been thinking and about and working on the question, what is fat activism daily? Not very much for the past sort of 25 years or so, you know. I still don't have an easy answer. Um, and it's a question that I came to in my master's dissertation, which was published as my book, Fat and Proud, in 1998, which was ages ago now. And I returned to it for my PhD, which was a four-year research project that I finished last November. And during that project, I interviewed about 30 fat activists around the world, people of all different backgrounds and perspectives, many of whom had decades of experience in, in uh, fat activism. And nobody gave me a consistent answer about what it actually is. Because they were chewing. And so given this, it made sense to me that fat activism can be absolutely anything. It just really depends on the context. Well, I like that. And this makes fat activism really exciting because Indeed. it means you can tailor it. <laughs> you can tailor it to what you're interested in. Yes. Or the things that you enjoy or the things that you're good at or yes. your very, very specific moments in your life. Yes. And so I kind of thought that so fat activism could be So if I'm just being be fat some... and rude and nasty in the lobby of a hotel... Because I've come down a few minutes after the the breakfast has ended. And I'm really giving it to the people that work there. And I'm giving it to them good. Is that, this sounds like that is fat activism. Well, I like that. If I throw a fit at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, because the car they gave me is what I consider to be uh, too small, that is fat activism. I'm now coming around to this and enjoying it. Let's let's watch a little more. Something really big, like a street protest, that's the thing that most people think of as activism when I talk to people about it, or a letter-writing campaign, that kind of thing. And it can be as small as a wink, a wink directed at the right person at the right time. Yes. Well, that's that I that I like. What she's basically saying is we don't need these street protests where everybody has to walk and chafe but a wink, a well-placed wink, <laughs> is fat activism. Wink, I will wink and make people uncomfortable, and I think that's a good barrier of entry. It's low. So the idea is that a well-placed wink to the right person is fat activism. So let's say, okay, if I, and I've actually done this, right? I've been in 7-Eleven, and I was eating the Big Un. The Big Un is a cheeseburger that you heat in the microwave. <laughs> and you take it out of its wrapper. And I've been with the Big Un in 7-Eleven eating it, you know, putting the pickles for the condiment bar on the Un and squeezing ketchup on it and biting it. And if I choose to wink at the cashier, I'm engaging in the important work of fat activism. Let's see what else. This is really, this is uh, beautiful. <laughs> like and it can involve changing laws, but it can also involve having a conversation with somebody or wearing something good. And sometimes it's about refusal of dominant cultural values. And sometimes it's really, really ambiguous. Some fat activists try and draw lines about what is and what isn't fat activism. But I think that kind of ideological purity is completely overrated. And I'm interested in those kind of hybrids um, that people develop for themselves and kind of try and draw in to make livable lives. Um, my fat activism is a part of my daily life. I don't Correct. put on a as uniform or an outfit well. or something special to do it. Right. Or go somewhere. Me too. Um, it's really embedded in the way that I think about things, Indeed. the work that I do, the yes. people I know. Yes. It's there in how I walk and how I talk. Yes. And I don't see much separation between activism and life. Right. Um, okay. You could think of it as a kind of consciousness. Yes. Um. Sometimes I do stuff that's more recognisable as activism. Oh, is so it good? I make things. Yes. I make zines, which are small homemade publications. Okay. Like this one, which I have for free. You can have a copy afterwards if you want. And sometimes I write and publish things, like my book, and I've published stuff in... Well, I'm on, on, sitting on the board for the, the Fat Studies Journal. It's an interdisciplinary journal of body weight and society. There's a mouthful for you. Well, how do you get in I that? I contribute to books like the Fat, the Fat Studies Reader. Okay. And also our own beautiful 
Fat Studies in the UK, which Karina co-edited. So I do stuff that is activism. And sometimes my activism is very small and subtle. It can be something like breathing or, <laughs> or thinking or... Um, Hold on. This woman just said her fat activism was the act of breathing. <laughs> that she could just be somewhere breathing and she's being an activist. Isn't that, isn't that sort of proving that being fat isn't healthy if breathing is activism? Aren't you giving away the game there a bit? If you know, my fat activism sometimes is very simple. It's like breathing or getting out of a chair. Doesn't that suggest that being overweight is potentially <laughs> unhealthy? I'm no doctor, neither is Rhonda Patrick, but I still think that there's something about breathing as activism that denotes probably not the healthiest lifestyle. But again, what do I know? But all right, let's, we, we've had enough. Thank you. We get, we kind of get it now. It's everything. It's nothing. It's breathing. It's winking at people. Whatever you want to do. Plus size models sent death threats by fat activists after dieting. This is what I like. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I like. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. I like a fat person threatening to kill a f another fat person who's started to get thinner. That, to me, is an interesting type of person and one that I want to know more about. The person that Rosie Mercado, who used to be a size 24 and is now a size 12 to 14, still fat, right? Good. Was told to jump off a bridge and kill herself by people <laughs> <laughs> with people <laughs> who objected to her slimming down. The 36-year-old told TMZ, I got hate mail. Not so much from other models, just fans that hated on me. Wow. They hated the thought that I was really public about my weight loss and I was losing weight. She lost more than 170 pounds. Some people love being overweight. Some people don't. That's what she says. I think it's a personal choice, but people were not happy. They were sending her threatening. They were threatening. They were telling her to kill herself. Oh, she was 410 pounds, too. She was 410 pounds, and then she got, and she lost 170 pounds. Well, she's down to 170 now, yeah. No, go up. Oh, wow. She's 170. Wow, good for her. She went from four. No, 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 <laughs> no. No good for her. No. You skinny piece of shit. She's a Benedict Arnold. There is a movement of fat activists that do activism by breathing. Heavily, yes. But she's... I can't believe you would say that and be so heartless. The people that loved her as a 410-pound model want her to kill herself <laughs> and jump off a bridge because she's now down to 170. The only reason I'm not afraid of that is people are telling me to kill myself anyway. <laughs> They're saying it now. Let's just do quickly Elon Musk at SNL. Everybody's angry that mm -hmm. Elon Musk is hosting uh, SNL. Mm -hmm. We'll do this quickly. Uh, Elon Musk uh, and Miley Cyrus, people are upset yeah. on the show. They're, you know, responding to his Instagram stories or whatever. I read yeah. this article. I don't know why he's hosting the show, but, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the show, and I don't know. I mean, they don't like that he's a billionaire, and Lord Michaels has a lot of money. He's got, like, half a billion. Mm -hmm. And Lauren's a legend. He deserves all his money, but, I mean... Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's weird that you can work for somebody worth half a billion and you're like uh, talking about income inequality. I don't know. You think it'll be funny? You think Elon's going to kill it? I don't know.
Think Elon's going to come in there and light it up with satirical brilliance? I'm not exactly sold on that, but I'm not exactly a huge, uh, I'm not, it's not for me, you know? Right. You said, what do you say he's going to do a Dogecoin sketch? He's going to, he might do a Doge father sketch, yeah. What does that entail? I guess he's like, you come to me on a day when Doge is, we're pumping and dumping the Dogecoin or, or something like that. Oh, that I sounds mean, horrible, man. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's better than that, what you just <laughs> described. Was that your idea of what a Dogecoin sketch should be? Well, the Doge father sketch. What, what, what else would it be? I don't know. I hope it's something else. That was horrific. <laughs> God. But, you know... We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be better than uh, we think, you know? Maybe. And then Miley Cyrus is on uh, Musical Guest. Mm -hmm. What about, they should have done like Ted Nugent just to really get everybody going. Just really get everybody going. Isn't Lorne Michaels a kind of a Republican too? There's no way he's not a Republican. Wasn't he like friends with Trump? Mm -hmm. Whatever. I don't know. I could be wrong. Elon Musk. It's going to be interesting. He's going to walk out there. Musk is the second richest person in the country after Jeff Bezos. Mm. Yeah. SNL was not available for comment. Well, we hope everything goes well for Elon and the cast of SNL. We hope that they come together to produce the great show that we know and expect every week. On Saturday night, which is opposite, our show is opposite Saturday Night Live. That's why we're a little, you know. This is the Saturday Night Live that we hope that you care about. But I understand if you have to switch over to watch uh, Elon Musk do the Doge Father sketch on Saturday Night Live. I will not hold it against you. You get Only one time, though. Only one time. That'll be a fun after party, huh? Mm -hmm. You think they're doing an after party? Doing an SNL after party with Elon Musk? Just walking around, talking to people on the show. He's got a lot of money. What if Elon Musk did an entire, they should do a Rogan sketch where like Elon like smokes weed and they got to have somebody play Joe Rogan, like have Bowen Yang play Joe Rogan. And then have Elon get high again and say something about vaccines. Get them all. That's what I say. Well, you can use that. That's a free suggestion, SNL Writers Room. You can have it, and I won't get mad. I will be very happy if you go with it. And if you don't go with it, just know that you have angered a fat activist. And I will not be silenced. And now I'm going to go back to my activism. 